We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Canelo Alvarez annoyed. He says that fighters are demanding more and more to fight him, but he still wants to fight in Japan later this year. We're going to talk about it. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang, please hit that bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats channel donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash App, and the Patreon family. We working. Sign up for ESPN Plus below using my link. It does help the channel when you guys click on that. Click on that link. You can also bundle ESPN Plus. Tons of great docu-series. They have sports, college football. They have top-ranked boxing, UFC, you know. Bundle that with ESPN Plus, Hulu Plus, or Hulu and Disney Plus. And that's all three apps for $12.99 per month. Let's get it. Canelo Alvarez, he did an interview and he spoke with ESPN Deportes. This is what Canelo had to say. He says, it's getting tougher and tougher, harder and harder to secure top names in the sport. You know, for him, at least. He says, quote, because they want a lot of money. When they go to fight with Canelo, they want the moon and the stars. That is the complication. But there are many opponents and there has to be one out there. I'm ready for anyone. He also expressed his interest still wanting to fight in Japan. He says, I want to fight there by the end of this year, fighting in Japan, if God is willing. That is the idea. I'm going to fight on May 2nd, and we will announce the opponent. There is not one opponent defined yet, but not. But he says, maybe not this year, but the next year I will fight in Mexico. There are possibilities to return to Mexico. I am delighted to come to Mexico. It can be anywhere in Mexico. So I want to talk about this. Listen, if you follow my channel, I've said the same thing over and over. So like a broken record, I'll continue to say it. The walls are closing in. Um, Canelo, he could say what he feels is, is relevant, but I feel the gamesmanship and the bullying people at the negotiating table is why his fights are being harder and harder to make you know Caleb Plant kind of touched on this and I made a video about that make sure you guys subscribe to my channel for daily content and uh Caleb Plant he he basically called out Golden Boy and says they're gonna act like I'm ducking I just fought two days ago I'm a champion respect me we could fight but you know how about he fight whoever he's gonna fight Billy Joe Saunders Caleb Smith I take care of David Benavidez and then we fight when everybody, you know, when it makes sense. Instead of me coming off of a three and a half month training camp, you know, I have a pre-camp, a camp, then the actual fight. And then fighting on Saturday and trying to finish negotiating with Canelo's team and then have a quick turnaround like that. And I express my thoughts in that video, but I'll quickly recap. I back Caleb Plant, 1,000%. Like, you know, there's a lot of people in the old media and Canelo man fans. They just want to see Canelo at any upper hand, any strategic advantage. So, of course, they're going to say the PBC fighter. And a lot of these dudes seem to have, be begrudged against PBC anyway. But they're, of course, going to say Caleb Plant should bend and, and do whatever Canelo is saying. But, again, people are getting hip. They're not trying to fight Canelo for the short money. They're looking deeper into the contracts with all the stipulations. This, These guys have careers too. And it's not about you don't think you could beat a person. If the deck is stacked against you, it's stacked against you. And, you know, and it's going to be harder to beat that. I think um, most of the guys in or around Canelo's divisions respect him as a fighter. I respect him as a fighter. I think he's a, a brilliant fighter. However, that coupled with the fact of weight stipulations, clauses, rehydration clauses, catching you with, you know, two weeks to train or six months to train or not six months like six weeks or short turnarounds quick turnarounds after you just had a difficult fight or long training camp you know these are all strategic advantages that golden boy and canelo continue to try to 
implore and, and you know enact on the different fighters that they're looking for so to me that's the real issue like i said the walls are closing in the bottom line is canelo since being on the zone his star power is waning he's still popular yes but as far as being the face of the boxing and putting on the biggest events how can you say he's doing that and his numbers aren't coming out you know if his numbers are coming out then that's one thing we we have yet to get actual fact you know numbers of paid only subscribers that tuned in to the fight not concurrent because you you guys have to realize with the DAZN app it's an app so it works different they don't have the Nielsen media research and um you know collectively tabulating how, how many views it did you know it's private so the numbers don't have to come out and they haven't been coming out so that's their prerogative but at the end of the day there has to be a reason why DAZN wouldn't want the numbers to come out. If Canelo was doing a billion streams, why wouldn't the numbers come out? You know, it reminds me of Drake's last album, Scorpion, double album. They had the Kiki, do you love me? Are you writing? And they were talking about how many streams and um, this guy and, and the Scorpion album, how many streams, total streams and downloads that it, that it got on Apple Music and on Spotify. The reason is because Drake is a big artist and his album was successful, you know, so of course they're going to basically gloat and brag about the amount of streams and the records he's breaking. But Canelo clearly is not breaking any records because we don't even get wind of um, the level of success his events are having, if any, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I think that's just it's a sign of the times. Canelo's a good fighter. People realize that, but they're not. They don't want the deck. They're not gonna bend and, and you know bend their back on stipulations and weight clauses. Plus, not get what they feel they're they're earn they're worthy of. You know, you looked at Kovalev. He's like, yo, I, I'm Kovalev. I beat Bernard Hopkins. Some people even argue I beat Andre Ward. So I have a body of work. I'm a champion. You're coming to my division where I'm champion, where you've never been champion, and. You wanted to give me less money than initially I'm talking about. You wanted to give me less money than Danny Jacobs got. How's that work? You know, and then now these other guys like Billy Joe Saunders and Caleb Smith, they're probably looking at what Kovalev got and what Jacobs got. And they're like, yo, how does he get that? And I, why don't I? So I don't feel mercy or I don't have I feel no ounce of sorrow for DeZone and Canelo regarding this situation. This is the environment that they've created. Flexing, talking about, you know, people like Eddie Hearns, who works with the zone. He came in the game, pompous. He said, We have the biggest budget in boxing. We have a billion dollars. And they keep talking about Triple G getting 15 million for Steve Rolls types of fights. They said Triple G has equity in the company with the zone. So he gets a cut. They said, <clears throat> Canelo has the highest sports um, contract in history out of all sports, right? He's getting thirty-six point five million. Again, when you when you add all these things up, this is the environment you created. You know, you created this this money hungry environment of uh, less less pass purses and talk purses and things like that, and and came in like ballers. So now that's what people are expecting. Jacobs got great money right Kovalev got great money right Andy Ruiz is supposedly got great money to fight Joshua twice right we we constantly hear Eddie Hearns talk who works with the zone constantly say oh we offer Broner we offer Charlo we offer Errol we offer Wilder you know three to four times more than they've ever made two to three times more than they've ever made we offer wilder a three fight deal worth a hundred million wilder didn't sign to you so you have you saved a hundred mil so why why are canelo's fights being so um why is it why are the opponents keep complaining about the purses you know and canelo's talking about they want the moon and the stars how hard is it you you had a hundred million to give wilder for three fights he elected to not go over there so you saved a hundred million, a uh, hundred million you allegedly have, and you saved it by he didn't go over there. You offered Charlo this alleged money for Canelo, and you said he turned it down. That's what De La Hoya said. You offered Charlo this alleged 
three times more than he's worth or whatever he's made for Android. You say he's turning it down and he's not responding to you. So you offer Broner a contract. He laughed and posted the contract on the internet. The money is looking funny. It's looking shaky because you offered all these star players, you know, Jamil, Jamal Charlo, Errol Spence, um, Deontay Wilder, Charlo for Canelo or Andrade supposedly, and none of them went. And it took two years almost to get Mikey Garcia, and now you're getting him coming off of a, a loss. And Mikey Garcia is getting reportedly $7 million off of an embarrassing loss that he called out a, a fight nobody told him to fight even his own dad and his own brother said stay away from that guy errol spence right now and mikey was insistent and then he got what he was looking for lost every single round to errol spence jr right i was there and now the is reportedly paying him seven million dollars for a comeback fight in a division where he has no victories at welterweight he hasn't proved that he's the same fighter at welterweight that he was at 135 140 in the previous divisions and they're allegedly giving him seven to ten million dollars and eddie hearns is saying that they offered charlo seven million dollars luis ortiz seven million dollars and this was when luis ortiz um had only lost to wilder you know it's just it's not making sense so Mikey coming off of a loss in a fight that's not even being promoted. So he's supposed to have all this star power. You're paying him seven to ten million dollars, you know, off of a loss where he lost every round. And you know, you, you're expecting Charlo, who's undefeated, who's more of a showman, more of a talker, more, you know, more of a pre-build guy that'll give you a, a, a fly or fun press conference, and you're offering him the same thing or less. You know, Canelo's opponents, Billy Joe Saunders, Caleb Smith, these are champions, undefeated champions, and they're having to argue and, you know, have additional negotiations to find and land on the number that they feel is sufficient. I mean, it just looks funny. It looks funny. Mikey Garcia is getting whatever off of a loss, but Billy Joe Saunders is undefeated, right? He's a champion. He has to fight for what he's trying to earn or whatever Caleb Smith or Ryota Mirada is it's the same thing Kovalev in the first negotiations Dervinchenko um Billy Joe Saunders first offer Caleb Smith first offer and Mirada all of them complained about the money and Canelo saying people want the moon and the stars it's unbelievable that is at least five people not including Charlo they're not even negotiating with Andrade you know Canelo's career right now looks a mess and I'm just being real, so I'm telling you it. It looks a mess. You know, that's five, six people who have all rejected offers from Canelo because the money wasn't good enough at, you know, at a point. And he's saying everybody wants more. And then, you know, just to add, he's he's talking about he wants to fight in Japan. For what? Like, it, it's weird. Where did, like, they're trying to make this fake history. Canelo has, I, this is what I told you. This is what I fear when DAZN first announced the Canelo deal. You can listen to them old videos and hear the same conversations. At that point, these were just questions because I didn't know what was going to happen. You know, I'm not a soothsayer. But over time, my worst fears came true. This is what's happening. There's, Canelo, if this, was, if this was dope, they're stretching it out. They're putting a lot of cut, and this is not pure. You know, he has 11 fights and now they're stretching it out to add all these like like fights that aren't really big events in the mix, like Rocky Fielding and stuff like that to stretch it all out, you know, because they have to keep the product, um, the value of the product high. So they don't want Canelo to potentially lose or look bad in the style. So they're trying to give him the best, you know, possible. Billy Joe Saunders didn't look good in his last fight. So it's a hell of a time for Canelo to fight him. Why didn't Canelo fight him after the David Lemieux performance where he looked brilliant? So, you know, and Ryota Mirada, like, where is this coming from? No one told Canelo, like, to go up to 175 to fight Kovalev, who was on his last leg, almost got stuck. Like, when, like, Canelo literally, if he fights Billy Joe Saunders or Caleb Smith, you are literally fighting back-to-back -back opponents who came off of bad performances. That's fact. Kovalev, you know, 
he got the stoppage, but he almost got stopped. So I wouldn't say that was a terrific Crusher Kovalev type of performance when Buddy McGurk told Kovalev, hey, another round like that, it's over. You look bad. I'm going to pull you out of there. So I, I can't say that's an all-star stellar performance despite the outcome because the same thing could be said for Billy Joe Saunders. Yeah, he got the stoppage, but look what he had to go through against who he had to go through it with to even get there. Man, and then now on top of like the Kovalev fight, no one really asked for that. You're trying to fight in Japan against Ryota Mirada. You're like hell bent on getting that fight done this year. So whatever, they must have offered him like Japan. They probably um, he probably get some good money or some additional perks to fight in Japan. So he likes those deals. But I mean, these aren't really legacy fights, stuff like that. You know, especially like a Murata fight. That's just filling Canelo's bank account. So good luck to DAZN promoting these fights. Um, I don't think a lot of them are going to resonate with the American public. I don't agree with Canelo. I don't think it's people who want the stars in the moon to fight him. They just want fair. Let me know what you guys think. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. If you love what I'm doing, smash the like button. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.